Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Christiana Davidson, as you may already know. Uh, I'm a psychotherapist and a hypnotherapist. Uh, you're very welcome in my channel here. Um, please do subscribe if it's your first time or if you haven't yet. Um, here on this channel, we discuss all things to do with childhood upbringing uh, and how each of us, you know, regardless of what background we come from, you know, whether it's a narcissistic family system or there was, you know, some kind of dysfunction or some trauma, or whether you felt you had a pretty normal uh, upbringing, each one of us is required, I believe, to go within at some point in, in our lives and to uncover the self-image that we took on as children and how that how that has impacted our lives because it, it happens to everybody. Now in the video today, um, we're talking about particularly in dysfunctional families and especially narcissistic ones, um, how love or affection uh, is given and withdrawn uh, in order to shape a child's behavior. So love is given as a, re a reward or the result of being and doing what the parent needs of the child. And in that sense, love becomes a tool that's used to manipulate. So in a narcissistic household particularly, children experience being loved when they are being a good girl or boy. And that basically means when they are being pleasing to the parent. So when the child is pleasing the parent, that means they are being a good girl or boy. When the parent expresses um, you know, happiness or being pleased or um, satisfaction, uh, or when the parent doesn't show any signs of um, annoyance or, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't give the child a rolled eyes or anything like that. That's when the child knows uh, that it, they are being pleasing to the parent and that they are lovable. So children in a narcissistic family system, a dysfunctional family system, they learn that to be lovable is a result of tuning in to the reactions of others and then adapting themselves accordingly. In this sense, they must control and monitor their own sort of natural childlike instincts uh, their own childlike freedom in some ways, or else the parent may not like it. Uh, and they may respond, the parent may respond with disconnection or a withdrawal of love. So the parent responds to behaviours that they don't like in the child by a clear threatening that they're withdrawing their love. And the child picks up on this. And of course, that's a very scary thing for a child uh, to believe that because of my behavior, my parent is threatening to not love me. That's how a child understands it. So love in this sense is used as a way of punishing and praising. So you get love when you're being praised by your parent and the parent withdraws their love and rejects you when you're being punished. So love is the tool here of forming the child in the way that the parent wishes them to be and what they wish them to do um, for them, really. Now, 
of course, you know, as a parent, it's not easy. <laughs> uh, and, and please, you know, don't don't get me wrong here. It's, you know, uh, trying to to um, nurture a child and, 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 you know, develop them in skills of navigating society and, you know, behaviours and things like that. That's that's not an easy thing for anybody to have the responsibility of. But there's a clear distinction here. Um, of of healthy parenting and unhealthy parenting, um, and I hope that this next little bit will kind of distinguish between those two. So, in a narcissistic or dysfunctional family, um, the child is loved when they're a good girl or boy, but they're made to believe they are not lovable when they are not being good when they're not being a good girl or boy. In a healthy family, the child is always aware that it is loved um, because the parent is able to separate the child from the behavior. So instead, in a narcissistic family system, the child is shamed for who they are, and that is not separated from the behavior. In a healthy system, the parent separates the behavior, but is able to show the child that they're loved, they are loved unconditionally. However, these behaviors may need some uh, fine tuning. Um, you know, that's the role of the parent then to help the child understand and you know uh, sort of come to some realization that these behaviors have this effect and it may be best to you know do it this way the parent is able to explain it and you know make it make it understandable for the child that this is the reason why um you know they're, they're saying these things uh, but the child never feels shamed um that you know that that behavior is who they are. Uh, whereas in a narcissistic family system, that's exactly what happens. The child is shamed uh, because the behavior reflects who they are. Well, rather, that's what the narcissistic parent uh, will imply. Um, so there's a sense there that any behavior that upsets anybody else is a reflection of a character flaw. And that is the main distinction uh, that I wanted to make here today. Uh, that love is withdrawn from the child in a narcissistic family system because of a flaw in their character. And that flaw in the child's character then is what the child believes they must always try to hide. Um, and hence, when children come then into adulthood, uh, they have this sort of shame base, this shame core that they need to keep hidden from everybody and keep under wraps, when really that's a lie. There's no shame there. Uh, what we need to do is we need to separate um, the behavior from the belief that's taken on as the child that I am somehow unacceptable I am not lovable I am flawed um, and that's the work I do with clients actually so as adults then we need to stop believing ourselves to be in ca inherently character flawed when we don't make other people happy or when they don't like us we really need to be able to step away from this need uh, to judge ourselves based on the reactions of others <clears throat> and even to adjust our behavior uh, based on the reactions of others. Um, and this is the work of, of really then uh, becoming the good parent to yourself and helping yourself to, to, grow, to grow, to grow up in some ways, um, because that's what we do need. Um, we do need to help um, ourselves to to um, learn the skills that perhaps we weren't uh, given in childhood um, that we were told was as a result of our flawed nature when it wasn't true. So
So I hope that that was uh, somehow helpful for you. Um, you know, because it's important to 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 understand our early. Uh, experience of what love is um, it's never something transactional uh, it should never be um, it should be something that is uh, given freely um, but comes with boundaries to healthy boundaries um, and that is a uh, part of the work that I, I would help you do if you worked with me and, and um, took my course uh, this powerful 11 week program that is having the most profound effects uh, for my clients. You know, it doesn't matter your background, to be honest. It doesn't matter what issue you come to me with. It could just be, look, I, I just want to sort of make sure that I've, you know, taken responsibility for my, my issues that I'm experiencing in the present. Fine. Uh, it may be that you, you, you know that you had narcissistic parents and you really want to stop the pattern you know, you may have had a, a, a serious trauma at some point in your life. Um, these are all the things that are, um, I hate to use the word solvable, but uh, these are the things that we can work on, that we can uh, really begin to move you on from so that you can be uh, at your best um, moving forward in your life um, and free from the past. So uh, if you would like to work with me, please do book in using my calendar link and um, I'd be very uh, delighted to hear from you. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye now.